She's rocking the house. <laughs> She's, woo. Wow, thank you so much. That was so great. Let's give her another hand. Woo. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Do you feel the energy in here today? Do you feel a little different? I mean, it, it felt so different. We decided to do a last minute change of the order of service. <laughs> And I'm okay with that because change is good. Oh, I don't know. I don't always feel that way. I'll be honest. I don't always like change. If you're, if you're here for the first time, my name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I'm the spiritual director here. And we have had quite a month. We got five Sundays this month. Yeah, right? So we get an extra Sunday, and this Sunday feels so juicy. And we've been talking about vulnerability all month, and so we get to dip into that deep well of vulnerability one more time. I feel like we've been, all month, we've been really opening ourselves up, right? We started the month with a beautiful metaphysical interpretation of Jesus Christ Superstar. Is anybody here for that? Yeah, yeah it was really amazing. Really amazing. We able to we were able to sort of look at something that has a lot of tradition and then bring ourselves as the philosophy and a community into it. And if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go to our YouTube page and to check it out because it, it really was powerful. We did a blossoming service on Easter Sunday. We talked, we had a couple of talks about vulnerability. Last week, Reverend Judy wowed us with her beautiful story and about vulnerability and I heard her talk about forgiveness and creativity and how vulnerability led her to this beautiful path of opening up. I really, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much, Reverend Judy. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about the power of vulnerability. And I, and I think about vulnerability as this almost like a double-edged sword to many of us. When we are, sometimes when we're experiencing vulnerability, it's not necessarily a pleasant thing. I know that the times in my life where I have felt the most vulnerable have often been times when I've gone through some kind of drama or trauma that sort of brings me to my knees and opens me up almost against my will. And yet, as I have gone through those experiences of being vulnerable, I've, I've learned more about myself. There's something that's grown or expanded when, when the, I have allowed myself to experience whatever it is, the depths of the experience of the, of the uh, disappointment or the heartbreak that I have gone through. And it's interesting, you know, if you're like me, you've grown up in this culture where you've got to be tough, right? <laughs> the world is a, is, can be harsh sometimes. It can be difficult. And, and I think we're brought up to, to be strong and to be resilient. And sometimes we use those characteristics that it's our nature to protect ourselves, to lock out or to shield ourselves from the, I'll call it, opportunity to be vulnerable. It takes courage to be vulnerable. There are a lot of unspoken rules, if you will, about needing to, um, you have to take care of me and mine, take care of my own. I was thinking back to uh, being in high school, right? Being in high school and being vulnerable was not... <laughs> It was not okay. <laughs> like, being in high school was tough. I didn't really know myself. I was trying to, you know, find my way in the, uh, with the crowd. I really wanted to fit in. I had to be cool. I didn't really know what it meant to be cool. <laughs> yeah, and so vulnerability was the last thing I would reach for, and yet I would have those experiences that every teenager has that would... Um, crack me open a little bit, and I'd hurry up and protect myself. And then as I began to 
uh, mature and start adulting for real and parenting. I felt more protective of my family. And none of that really gave rise to a intimate, healthy relationship with vulnerability. And what I found was that as I began to uh, open up spiritually, I began to experiment. Like many of you, I know some, you know some of you have been blessed to have been brought up in this philosophy, and the rest of us have had to find it and discover it, right? And, and I know that as I was doing on my own discovery path, I used to hear things about vulnerability in, in different ways. My teacher was a huge fan of... Uh, Rumi and Hafiz, the, the early century poets. And I remember hearing about poems about annihilation. <laughs> and I thought to myself, what? <laughs> it was very confusing, honestly, to think about wanting to have some kind of annihilation happen in my life. I had a lot of that already, and thank you, that was quite enough. <laughs> The, the real blessing about being in a philosophy like this is we begin to understand the deeper meaning of what the Sufi mystics talked about when they talked about annihilation. They weren't talking about ruin. They weren't talking about failure. They were talking about being completely open and available to spirit, unabashed by egoic experiences, unabashed by the things, uh, worldly material concerns, that it was simply a moment of surrender so that they could know their oneness with love, so that they could know their love with oneness with God, so they could know their oneness with, with all life. That really wasn't my experience <laughs> when I was coming up and, and I was having my dramas and traumas that would bring me to my knees and open me up and, and crack me open. But as I began to practice, practice meditation, take classes, begin to work with affirmations, I began to do some exploration. I began to do some excavation. And I found that my being open and allowing myself to be vulnerable let in the light. You know, a lot of us have the experience, I, I, I like to think I'm not the only one, <laughs> a lot of us have the experience where we, you know, we kind of start out in life with that tough, thick exterior. You know, I remember when I first sort of witnessed my own walls that I, that I had put up and something had happened and those, you know, it wasn't about deconstructing those walls, it was about watching them tumble down around my feet. And there was something that I began to touch inside of me, that tender heart. The, the very thing that I used to protect me against the hurt or the sorrow or possibly, you know, any kind of uh, the feelings that, that are di were difficult to navigate was the very thing that was cutting me off from the sunshine of, lo sunshine of love. And it was vulnerability that readied me to feel that, to, to begin to explore that whole part of me that I had kept walled off because I was protecting myself against the things that were uncomfortable. And it reminded me, as I was thinking about that, of this um, wonderful Rumi poem. Maybe some of you have heard it. It's uh, called, A Chickpea to the Cook. A chickpea leaps almost over the rim of the pot where it's being boiled. Why are you doing this to me? The cook knocks him back down with the ladle. Don't you try to jump out. You think I'm torturing you. I'm giving you flavor. So you can mix with spices and rice and be the lovely vitality of a human being. Remember when you drank the rain of the garden? This was for that. Grace first, sexual pleasure, 
Then a boiling new life begins, and the friend, with a capital F, has something good to eat. Eventually, the chickpea will say to the cook, boil me some more. <laughs> Hit me with your skimming spoon. I can't do this by myself. I'm like an elephant that dreams of gardens back in Hishtanistan and doesn't pay attention to his driver. You are my cook, my driver, my way into existence. I love your cooking. The cook says, I was once like you, fresh from the ground, then boiled in time and boiled in the body, two fierce boilings. My animal soul grew powerful. I controlled it with practices and boiled some more and boiled once beyond that. And I became your teacher. Yeah, yeah. You've, it, it's such a beautiful poem, and it's... And it explains so beautifully that experience that many of us have with vulnerability. It's, it's not necessarily something we welcome. And yet, when we walk through it and we get to the other side, and I want to back up a minute, because sometimes the, 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 the way we walk through it is finding safe spaces, this company that can help us to cross that threshold into those, those unknown places within ourselves. And communities like this are exactly the right place to allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to, to jump back into the boiling pot, to see what's there for us, to allow that flavor and richness to develop within our body temples and our souls and our minds and our friendships and our relationships. And so there's truly a power to vulnerability that helps us to connect. It creates a pathway for us to follow that, that we wouldn't have seen when we were busy navigating this thing we call life this, in this westernized culture that we live in that's fast-paced and has us, our attention going in, in so many different directions, right? I don't know about you, but there's a lot of it. There's a lot of activity dr trying to grab my attention. And so, as I think about this idea of power, the power of vulnerability, the thing that came to mind for me is that there's a distinct difference about the vulnerability that we experience because we can't let go and surrender and the vulnerability that we experience when we step into vulnerability on purpose with intention, knowing that there's some wonderful growth experience that's going to come through this. I had been in this teaching for, gosh, I guess it was 2015, and so I, I had been around for, um, yeah, about, about 16 years. I had been a minister for about eight and um, my marriage of 31 years ended. And I experienced, of course, deep depths of grief. Anybody who's been through divorce, you know what I'm talking about. I, I had a lot of girlfriends who had been through divorce before me, and I remember trying to comfort them before I had that experience, and I had to go back and apologize to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't know until you know. You really don't know until you know. But one of the things that I had been taught and given was spiritual community and a philosophy that worked and tools that would help me grow. And so when I was struck by the cook's spoon back into the boiling pot of grief of divorce, I knew. I knew why I was there. I was there to open up some more. So I leaned in and I allowed myself. I remember I said, I'm going to take a year and I'm going to let this grief carry me. And I'm going to allow this grief to open me up to those places that I've been afraid to go into. That's the power of vulnerability. We don't know, but we trust. The, the, the ability to be able to, to lean in, to trust, and to... 
there's this great quote that comes to mind, and it goes, trust is the fruit of a relationship where we know we've been loved. I, I just adore that quote because it, it reminds me that when I have been cultivating a life of love and I've been cultivating deep relationships, when I've been cre you know, doing my part to respond with love, <laughs> that I can trust that whatever relationship, um, whatever experience that I have, if, if it is an experience of loss or grief, if it's an experience that's felt unwelcome at first, <laughs> <laughs> if it's an experience that I didn't expect, because I know that I am loved, I trust that it's for me. And that's the beauty of vulnerability because it can bring us into a place of trusting that whatever is happening, however unpleasant it may seem, that there is there's more than just the, w the word hope comes to mind, but it's more than that. There's an opportunity for expansion. There's an opportunity for growth. And so we experience vulnerability at an individual level, and then there's community or group vulnerability. And sometimes I think we can confuse oversharing with being vulnerable. <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> But I've seen you do it. <laughs> Sometimes we need to be heard and we need to be seen. And being vulnerable in a group is about allowing ourselves to trust the group process. We had a lovely board retreat this weekend, Friday and Saturday. And I had a, a wonderful opportunity to, to step into vulnerability. We had these great plans. We had hired this facilitator. We rented this beautiful place for us to go away and be, in, be on retreat as a board. And um, as things happened, the facilitator had to back out, and we canceled the beautiful venue. But I knew that our, our, our board of trustees needed to come together. It was time. It was time for us to do, start doing that deep work. And, and so I put together a process where we asked questions and drew from our experience. And I had no idea what we were going to end up with by the time we were done on Saturday. I mean, I had, I had kind of a sense, but I had to let go of my agendas and all the things that I know, and I had to do that thing that many leaders are afraid to do. I had to be willing not to know. I had to be willing to trust the process. I had to be willing to trust God in form as our trustees. And I, I'm sure if you'll talk to our trustees, I know we all had the same experience, that there was something that was greater than any of us had anticipated as we began to look at our purposes as the board of trustees, as we began to look forward and to lay the groundwork for, uh, I want to say getting clearer. I, we, we are coming out of a, of a, of a you're probably tired of hearing it about this, but a, a, a huge time of change. And I don't think we're done. And so this, uh, this tactic, if you will, or this, this skill, emotional skill of being willing to be vulnerable and being willing not to know and being willing to be in a group of individuals where we can trust each other as we move through this, and be reminded that even when we don't know, something in us does know, right? That's the power of vulnerability. That's the power of coming to a place of connection and allowance and bringing things forward. We all make mistakes, right? We all stumble. And it's a sign, I think, of emotional maturity to just be okay with that, to be okay with the missteps, to be okay with the things that didn't happen the way you planned, to just let it roll, see what God has in store for us. I was watching the, um, um, has anybody seen the marvelous Miss, Mrs. Maisel? 
Yeah, yeah. So, so we know that Abe has a new career as a, as a theater critic, and he, uh, he has this episode where he's made a mistake. He's misspelled Carol Channing's name. And he, he lets his publisher know, he's like, it's okay, I'm calling every subscriber to apologize. <laughs> that's, you know, that's how we approach mistakes, isn't it? It's like, oh my God, you know, Maya culpa. <laughs> we, we beat ourselves up instead of saying, what is in this for me? What is it that is shifting the landscape that I am currently comfortable with, what is it that's new that's going to come out of this? As we wrap up this idea of the, the power of vulnerability, I, I want you to take with you that, that intentional vulnerability is the power of opening ourselves up like the Sufi mystics, being completely available to spirit, just as we are, and trusting that not only are we loved by the Creator, but we're loved by each other. We're safe. I'll leave you with this one thought the next time you find yourself being vulnerable. I had a, a mentor who um, and a friend, and he used to tell me, vulnerability is where it's at. That's where you want to be. He said, try it. Come on. Nobody goes around kicking babies. <laughs> <laughs> no, when we're tender, it's our time to take care of each other. And, and when we get defensive, when we get prickly, it's harder to let people love us where we're at. So go ahead, lean in, try it. Trust that love and creation and the people around you will help you through it. Thank you very much. And so let's pray. And so I invite you to place your hands over your heart. And as you feel the beating of the, that beautiful heart in your chest that not only is the physical center of your being for your body temple, know that this is also the window for which love fills you up and then lets you express yourself. And in the tenderness of that sacred space in the middle of your chest, know that the power and the presence of the one love and the one light for every step that we take towards love Love comes rushing towards us to embrace us. Grateful that we have said yes, that we are willing to be open and available to life. And so I know for each one here that we are truly available, that we let love in and we let love flow out, that we live in this beautiful cycle of giving and receiving. That we walk out this week looking for those places to be more real, to be more available. And sometimes that availab availability looks like sharing ourselves more, and sometimes that availability means being there for someone else. And so we embrace vulnerability as the pathway to power and possibility and connection. And we are grateful for the opportunities to be 
jump back into the boiling pot knowing that there's nothing that can hurt us and that there's everything to gain. And so I give thanks for the willingness of each one to be vulnerable, to walk through life open-hearted so that we can not only receive but give so freely of all that we already are. So as we anchor this prayer in that same power of love, I know for each one that we are lifted and carried. I simply let this go. And we surrender this word by saying, and so it is. And so it's time to bring back.